Okay, right, Brixham. Here we are in Brixham Harbour. If you look over there, you can see all the smaller boats coming in, the day haulers, which are the smaller boats in, in uh, Brixham Harbour. You've got two classes, the big class, uh, the ones that go away for eight or nine days uh, at a time. And uh, basically, if they fish away from Brixham, they land their fish wherever they work, and it comes back to Brixham on a lorry and sold in Brixham. This port is known as the mother port of fishing because there was an awful lot of boats, the old boats, the sailing trawlers, which you see, which in Brixham you've got um, Leader, Provident, Pilgrim and Vigilance. That's the four big ones that work from here at the moment. And there are some smaller ones which come from Cornwall, um, i.e. the um, Iris and Our Daddy. They're Lou Luggers, which is a different class of boat. But even now, the modern equivalent has still come to Brixham to fish in the wintertime. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a connection that's never been broken. Uh, Brixham Sailing Trawlers, at one point, in this particular harbour, there was four boat yards, and these boat yards produced boats that opened up all of the North Sea. They opened up um, pretty much most of the west coast of England from, um, well, they used to fish all up around North Devon. They used to land in Milford Avon. Uh, Tenby in Wales was a massive port that they used to use. And from there, they went all the way up to Fleetwood and they used to fish up in the Irish Sea around uh, the Isle of Man. And um, as I said before, they worked up into the North Sea. And what happened was, because the North Sea at that particular time was run or being fished by a lot smaller boats, and these boats, the Brixham trawlers, were very, very famous, very, very good sea boats. They could go further away and stay at sea longer. Um, the people that had trawlers that were built in Brixham decided to move their entire fleets or boats initially from here to Ramsgate. They worked out of Ramsgate. So a, a big fleet was established there. And then from Ramsgate, they moved up to um, Lowestoft, and then Hull and Grimsby. So the initial, uh, those particular ports were quite small. But once the Brixham Sailing Trawlers arrived, they became a lot bigger because people realized that these boats were more and more efficient. and. Um, we want, they wanted one of those. They didn't want to get a little small one, they wanted a bigger one. So then yards were developed in Sussex, in Rye, and in Lowestoft. But to start with, most of the boats that went up to that area to fish were either built on the River Dart or in Brixham. So Brixham, as a, as, as a port, that's the reason it's called, it will become uh, known as the mother port of trawling, because the boats never stayed locally, they went all over the place. Wherever they thought they could earn money, they went to. And that's why the, the rig, although there were slight differences in the boats eventually that were built in Fleetwood or built in Sussex, in Rye or built in Lowestoft, essentially it was the same rig. It was a gaff rig catch trawler. So it was a very efficient rig. Originally they had big um, catches that had one mast and one massive rig, but it got to the point where the mainsail was too big the only way that they could operate safely with a small crew was to split the rig up. So they moved the mast further forward and then built another mast. So now you, you see all the trawlers have got two masts. So they can miss the mast and the main mast. But they're very, very, very well constructed. They're very good boats. And um, this is why they're still around today, because they're actually well put together. I think the oldest one we've got in Brixham is uh, Leader, which was built in um, 1892. And the other one is Pilgrim, because Leader was built on the River Dart, and the other one is Pilgrim, which was built just over the road, which, well, unfortunately, now the boat yard's not there. It's all new houses. But that particular yard was um, Upham's, built some of the most famous boats that sail from this harbour. Um, the most famous one is a boat called Ibex, which, out of the 33 races, won the race 29 times. And it got to the point where they decided that they would give the cup to the owner and ask him not to race again because no one could beat him. Yeah, so um, Brixham, as I said, is, is a well-known port and um, ju just after the war, uh, the biggest problem was most of these sailing trawlers had very, very sort of rudimentary, uh, rudimentary navigation equipment and um, so after the First World War, a lot of boats were sunk. So a lot of these boats went to sea and where they, originally the ground was clear and they could fish without worrying about catching their nets. They lost a lot of um, equipment. So a lot of the boats became 
it where it got to the point where they were losing more money than they were actually making. So after the First World War, um, steam engines were starting to come into being. And up on the east coast of England, specifically, uh, places like Lower Staff, Hull and Grimsby, what happened was um, a particular tug, which was a steam-driven tug with paddle wheels, used to tow the sailing trawlers out the harbour when there wasn't enough wind. Yeah, so, the, the, so this particular tug skipper suddenly realised that the trawler he was towing to the fishing grounds was actually towing a trawl. So he thought, well, I just want to cut out the middleman because if I can tow a trawl, or a trawler towing a trawl, I'll tow my own trawl. So he experimented and, it, and realized it was more money catching fish than towing fishing boats out to sea that couldn't sail because there was no wind. And um, so then all of a sudden, the, fishermen, the other fishermen realized that steam was the way forward. So all the boats that were then under sail were sold mainly to um, Scandinavian countries uh, very, very cheaply, because everybody then wanted a steam trawler. So that's how steam trawlers sort of came to being the, 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 the new in thing in fishing boats. And um, in Brixham, that was one of the last places that sailing boats still worked, but in the North Sea, it grew to such a point that the Brixham fishermen realised that they were like way behind the times. So they also decided that they would turn over to steam and then by the time the Second World War came along, small diesel engines were invented. So steam was again superseded by diesel. So the steam trawlers disappeared and then they all became engine boats. And so all the sails were, were taken off the boats, the masts were cut down, so the rigs changed. And um, in Brixham specifically, in the sort of after the war, the Second World War, 40s and 50s, there were a lot of boats that came from uh, Belgium, Holland and France to escape the Germans that were based in Brixham and they liked the place and decided to stay. So all their boats essentially had diesel engines. So by that time, everything had changed over to diesel engines. And the method of the fishing had changed slightly because whereas the older boats had one beam trawl, someone developed um, a designer net called an otter trawl, which meant that they could tow a bigger trawl on a smaller boat. Um, which was controlled by two wooden boards. Uh, as the boat went through the water, the water pressure kept the net open and they could do a lot more on a, on a smaller boat. So Brixham during the sort of 50s and 60s had smaller boats and then at some point during the early 70s, the first beam trawler arrived in Brixham, the first modern beam trawler, which you see now. And that essentially came from, one came from Belgium and the others came from Holland. So these boats then got better and better and better, and bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, more efficient. Instead of towing one trawl, they used two trawls. And so this is why Brixham has always survived because it's always looking for the next best thing. And it will always, if it works, they will use it and move on. But during, like I say, the biggest problem for most fishermen now is the debris that's on the seabed that was sunk during the First World War and the Second World War. Um, because most of the wrecks that originally were on the seabed as such ended up on the beach because sailing ships, if they get in bay like in Torbay and they can't get out of the bay because the wind's in the wrong direction or they get caught on a lee shore and they can't get off, the wreck is actually on the beach. It's not out in the ocean. But the stuff that happened during the war is scattered all, all the way through the English Channel. So it costs them a lot of money. But with modern aids these days, they've got um, GPS, uh, they've got radar, there's lots of um, information that they can use, um, old fishing charts, and every time somebody catches an obstruction, it's plotted on a chart, so the next generation has got the information from the last generation, which makes the job a little bit easier. Right, the, 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 the new so-called heritage race in Brixham, um, originally, as I said, there were a lot of sailing trawlers that used to race for various cups. They went back a hell of a long way. And um, the last race, uh, the last original race, if you like, was um, race probably 70 odd years ago. And uh, one day I was a guest up in uh, Brixham Yacht Club and I saw a cup in there, which was given to the fisherman by the King of England, King George V. And it said on this, on this cup, uh, perpetual challenge cup to be raced for by catch rigged Brixham sailing trawlers over 40 tons. And I asked the Commodore then, who was the Commodore, 
I said, why is the cup in the Yacht Club? And um, he said, well, there's no more sailing trawlers around, so we use it for modern yacht racing. And so I said, well, I know that Provident is in Solcombe, and another Brixham trawler, um, Leader, is um, at the moment based in Scotland, but it will come back to be based on the River Dart. So as far as I was concerned, two boats make a race. So I spoke to the Commodore and I said, look, if I can get boats back to race for this cup, are you prepared to let us use it? And he said, yeah, because he said, that's what it was for. So um, this now is probably, I think it was 97, that we restarted the first heritage race. And um, it's now grown that we've got our own fleet of boats back. Um, historically, uh, Prince Charles has actually presented the cup to uh, uh, Pilgrim, who won it one year. Um, so it's growing and growing and growing, which is really, really good because we've now got Brixham's original heritage back from all these old sailing boats that landed their fish, that all the facilities you see in this harbour were um, paid for by those boats that caught the fish. There is a modern equivalent of the um, heritage race, which is the, the modern trawlers you now see, but that is a separate race. But they still race for cups that were given by various people in the town over the years. You know, so the historic connection has not been lost. And at the end of the day, it's nice to have the original boats that used to work out this harbour. OK, they might be sailing boats, but they're still essentially Brixham sailing trawlers. And they've got the connection between the modern Brixham trawler and the old, which is really, really cool. They're not yachts. You know, they're far from yachts. They've, done, they've served their time. They're sort of old ladies of the sea, if you like. And, um, and as I say, if you look around Brixham, you will see the symbol of a Brixham sailing trawler on many, many businesses. There's gas house, there's dentist shops, there's the uh, tourist information. So, and even worldwide, you will see the symbol of a, a Brixham sailing trawler. Me, as a fisherman, well, I started fishing a, lo a long time ago. My family's been fishing for a long, long time. Uh, my son is a fisherman, and essentially it hasn't changed that much, the job out there. The boat has obviously changed, but we're still doing the same job. We're still trying to catch fish. And um, we're using two beam trawls instead of one, where they used one beam trawl originally. We've got more information in regards to um, echo sounders, GPSs and things like that. So our job is actually a little bit easier. But at the end of the day, we still get paid the same way. If you don't catch any fish, you don't earn any money. Um, we don't get paid a wage. Um, and you can't say, oh, it's too rough to go to the sea. Because if you don't go to the sea, you don't earn a living. So sometimes you have to take a chance and you might get caught out in bad weather. But these boats, um, okay, they're, they're engine boats, but they're, they're very good sea boats. But we still do the same sort of amount of time at sea. We still do sort of six, seven, seven days, and we're working from the time we leave, day and night. And it is a tough old job, and it's, but it's not a job, it's a way of life. You know, it's, a lot, we have a lot of people come in that want to be fishermen, that don't understand that it's, it, it is a way of life. And, they, and the biggest thing they find hard is um, being seasick for one, um, sleep deprivation, the long hours that you do, and also there's no guarantee that you might actually pick up some wages at the end of the week. You know, you've got to base it over a 12-month period because one week you might have a very good trip, the next week um, the fish doesn't make any money. So it's always a gamble. And, and one of the most important things which is I understand is you're fighting the most powerful force on earth, which is Mother Nature, the sea, um, because it doesn't take any prisoners. So you soon learn how to grow up very fast and deal with every single situation that's thrown at you.